Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Wadcast Podcast. I am your host, Eddie Ift. I am sitting outside my house. Uh, it's about 75 degrees here in, up in the mountains, and it's just a beautiful day. And uh, I'm about to give you this episode with our guest, Duffy Gaver, who, uh, if you don't know Duffy, check him out. He is a, uh, he's a, uh, uh, there's so many things about him, and he's a difficult guy to explain. Uh, if you go on the internet, they'll call him a celebrity trainer, but he's way more than that. Uh, Duffy's a former Navy SEAL, sniper, uh, Marine. He's, uh, he's just uh, w- one of the, like, you know, if you're going to get in shape, this is the guy you want to do it. Um, so many celebrities. Uh, I don't want to mention the names. I let him mention them because some of these guys that do what he does don't like. He's not one of these flamboyant guys. He's not one of these trainers out there looking for publicity all the time. I had to hunt him down to get him to do the show. I find him an incredibly interesting guy and just no bullshit down to earth. Uh, great, great, great guy, though. And uh, so I'll let him speak for himself. In the episode, even though you guys know me, I talk a lot of shit. Um, The show has been killing it. I want to thank you guys. The, the, The numbers are just going up and up and up, which is really weird because I don't hear from you guys much. And I don't know which guests you like, which guests you don't like. Do you want more CrossFit? Do you want more health oriented shit? Do you want more uh, nutrition? What are you looking for? Please. I like feedback. You've been good on the, uh, not the Instagram. You've been good on the iTunes uh, reviewing and rating. I love that when you go and rate, review, comment, criticize, whatever you do, just as long as you're, you know, um, engaged. But, uh, hey, Noosa, stop. My dog wants inside. Um, but like stuff like the Instagram, I would love it. There's so many thousands of you that listen to this show. Can you all just go to Instagram, please? And add, uh, at Wadcast podcast, uh, please. And, uh, I post every week, a couple times, two to three times who the guest is stuff that's going on, uh, stuff about the upcoming run, the Wadcast run we're doing. But, uh, I love to hear from you. I love to hear if you say, Hey, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're fucking around too much, or, you know, we want more information or we want more, uh, we want more, uh, you know, uh, comedy, whatever it is. I just like to hear it. So the best place is Instagram. So, so come get on at Wadcast podcast. Let me know. And, um, also if you want to support the show, best way, you know how go to wadcastpodcast.com. There's a click through to hit Patreon. Uh, you can donate at Patreon. It's uh, anything you want to give. You can give a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever to keep the show rolling along. It helps. Every single dollar helps. And what we do is if you if you uh, basically donate five dollars a month, we put you in a drawing for a myopux and a leopard claw. The myopux is an electronic muscle stimulator that's going to help you with any kind of injuries you have, any kind of DOMS, whatever's going on that you want to flush the inflammation and expedite that process. Process, get that congestion out of there, get it into your lymphatic system. That's what this is for. It's a little electronic device. You put the pads on you. It's like a TENS unit. It also has a TENS unit in it uh, to make pain go away. And you just turn it on, whatever cycle you want, and it's going to go to work on you. Uh, another thing, the Leopard Claw, which is a multi-tool device that you're going to use. It's like a gua sha or whatever they're called. I never know the proper way to say that. But they're used to kind of uh, increase blood flow to the point of wherever blood's being restricted. If there was an injury, if there's adhesions, you scrape, you get in there, you work away at that area. And uh, it'll look pretty gnarly, but in the end... Uh, that area is going to be, uh, the gunk's going to be gone and it's going to be flowing through there and it's going to heal that area. And then best thing to do, flush it out with the myopucks. So if you guys want to get one of these, it's five bucks a month this week, our winner, dun, 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 dun. that was my drum roll it was terrible. Zach Hundley, Zach, congratulations. All you have to do now, Zach, is send us an email at wadcastpodcast at yahoo.com and we will ship that off to you. Okay. So uh, we appreciate everybody who does donate, who uh, helps out with the show, and uh, also our sponsors who help out with the show. Um, they've been great to us. And uh, uh, 
this one sponsor that I want to talk to uh, talk to you about. Um, I've actually gotten really, really nerdy into my nutrition, my recovery, my trying to stay healthy as I train for the first and only. I, I'm not going to call it annual. The first and only Wadcast podcast run across the Backbone Mountain on Nova, Backbone Trail. Uh, I'm thinking Brokeback Mountain. Boy, we're just going to all go back up into the mountain and drink some whiskey and fuck. Um, yeah, we're going uh, so far. The only one who really, really is fully, fully 100% committed, Tommy Hackenbrook. Uh, I'm I'm hearing from some other people, Dustin Fierro, who's been a guest on the show, Winston Fisher, who's been a guest on the show, Dan Cox, who's been a guest on the show, uh, a friend of mine, Nick Wolf, a friend of mine, Mickey D. He's not coming. He says he's got to go to Thailand or something. But um, all these guys are talking about coming, and I need commitments. And so get on them. Give them shit. Hunter says he's coming. Hunter McIntyre says he's coming. I don't believe it. I don't believe he's got it in him. So give him shit. The Wadcast podcast run is going to go across 68 miles across the Backbone Trail, which goes from uh, Will Rogers State Park in, in the Pacific Palisades down near Santa Monica all the way to Point Magoo, which is in Ventura County. So we're going across a whole county practically. 68 miles. Elevation I just saw is 14,000 feet. I have been running parts of it. It's hard as fuck. We're going to try to break 24 hours. That is a hard time to do. Uh but we're going to try to do it. That's the goal. We need help. We need people to donate. If you go to eddieif.com, all of the money, all of the money, every 100%, we are going to self-support ourselves. But all of the money that you give is going straight to, straight to the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. Uh, that way, uh, they get every dollar because those are the guys that fought the fires up in these trails that were running uh, back in November Eighth of last year when the entire mountain chain caught on fire. So we're running across that mountain chain. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. If you want to help out, you can also come. We're going to need about four, four different. Uh, we're going to need about four different uh, pit stops where we're going to change out our water, get uh, snacks, change our socks, whatever we're going to do to keep us towards our goal. And if you want to be part of that, think it might be fun. You guys might want to sit up in the mountains, drink some beers, wait for us to come in, laugh at us, make fun of us, and then maybe go to the next station. So it'll be like, I don't know, about 15 to 17 mi miles in between each station. So about three or four hours, whatever. If you want to donate your time, send us an email at Yahoo, uh, at the Yahoo, at the Wadcast podcast at yahoo.com. Let me know. It'd be great to have you. It's going to be a fun community event. And, uh, you know, these guys are donating their time trying to do this thing. If you want to come with us and you think you're badass enough, I'm not a badass. I don't know why I'm trying to do it. Uh, I think I'm absolutely insane. But as I was saying, I'm really trying to dial in my nutrition. Everything that I can possibly do to help my performance and make sure I recover well. And that's why I have uh, kind of partnered up with Alpha Wolf. Alpha Wolf Nutrition, there's a guy there named Rob, Robert Clark, and he created Alpha Wolf Nutrition. And it was all about um, – he wanted to take supplements and stop being a business and start doing something that like believing in what he was doing first and then worry about you know making money later. And first thing he did, he created a multivitamin because everybody needs one. If you talk to your doctor, they'll say you need one. And what he wanted to do, he um, he created a superfoods-based uh, multivitamin, and it's scientifically formulated. <clears throat> it's got micronutrients, phytonutrients, dense superfoods to aid your body at a cellular level. Um, it's got ingredients to promote healthy nitric oxide production for maximum blood flow and circulatory health. If you know about nitric oxide production, that's uh, why some people drink some beetroot juice. So okay, that's going to help you circulation. And it's got dynamic antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties to minimize recovery time, aches, pains. So look, it's your one it's once a day multivitamin that you take. It's going to do all this stuff. Um, but it's more than a multivitamin. 
It's next level superfoods, my multivitamin, like literally no other vitamin comes anywhere close to offering what they do. It's, it's not even the same galaxy. It's, it's basically like you're getting a multivitamin that's on par with a high end green drink. So if you're going to juicing and you're getting a green drink, a good one's costing you, I don't know, anywhere from eight to $12, maybe $15. This you're taking one pill. So check it out, check out their, uh, their multivitamin and it's got, like I said, the beetroot and the pomegranate. That's going to help you with your endurance. It's also going to help boost your testosterone levels. Um, and they have a testosterone booster, which is another product, which all you guys out there over 30, you better start looking into this. You're going to need a you're gonna need a testosterone booster, and this isn't a fake one. They don't use fenugreek or D-aspartic acid, which both have been proven over and over again to have no effect on your testosterone. So don't fall for that crap and get yourself a liposomal sleep aid. We all know now sleep is almost more important than your exercise and your nutrition. So if you're having trouble sleeping or you just want to get really, really deep sleep, try this out. They have a liposomal sleep aid. Liposomal is the way it's delivered into your system, and it's got everything you need from melatonin, GABA, L-theanine, and glutathione. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's a master antioxidant, and it reduces oxidative stress on the body. So if you want to check any of these out, any of them, go to Alpha Wolf Nutrition. That's Alpha Wolf Nutrition. This is going to get me through those mountains. AlphaWolfNutrition.com. A-L-P-H-A-W-O-L-F Nutrition.com. Use Wadcast 15 for 15% off your order. Again, AlphaWolfNutrition.com. Use Wadcast 15. You get 15% off your order. Wow, that was, uh, that was a lot to, to shove down your throat, but I can't emphasize more how important it is to get your multivitamin with all of those all of those nutrients in there. Get yourself a sleep aid and get yourself a testosterone booster and you're going to be looking good, real good. So uh, uh, thanks for listening to the show. I hope you enjoy this one with um, Duffy Gaver. Oh, before, before, whoa, I have to stop you this weekend. I forgot to mention Seattle, Seattle, Seattle. I'm going to be uh, at the, it's called the, the Comedy Underground. It's right in downtown Seattle. It's one of my favorite clubs because it's in a basement. I love comedy in basements. It's where it should be, where you can say shit. You don't get in trouble. You don't get fired from SNL. Uh, it's how comedy should be. Don't record comedy. It's just jokes and people get so fucking angry. One of my favorite clubs. It's like a speakeasy. Come see me at the Comedy Underground Seattle. That's this weekend. Uh, doing lots of shows. I don't know how they wrote me into it. I usually like to do Friday, Saturday if I can. And sometimes they get me for Thursday. These guys got me Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's the 19, 20, 21, 22. Get your tickets now. And then coming up, I will be new shows just announced. Just announced. Well, first, I'm going to be in Reno, October 8th to 13th. I'm going to be at the Silver Legacy Casino, the Laugh Factory there in Reno, Nevada. I'll be working out somewhere. I got I to gotta keep up my runs. I'll be doing some mountain runs up there. Seattle, I need to look for some mountain runs if anybody can tell me where to go. And then the 18th and 19th of October, I'm going to be out in um, Salt Lake City. I'm coming to Salt Lake City. to. It's called Jordan Landing is the area I'm going to be in. There's a Wise Guys Comedy Club there. So get your tickets. I really want to sell that one out. I'm thinking about doing a CrossFitters only show maybe on Sunday. If you guys would be interested, if there's any CrossFit gyms out there, contact me at wadcastpodcast at yahoo.com and we can uh, start talking about maybe doing like a Sunday daytime show with just CrossFitters. How would that be? Um, so let me know. Some other shows coming up, Calgary, uh, Naples, Florida, uh, Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska, uh, Portland, Oregon. All those dates are at edf.com. And now you can enjoy the episode with Duffy Gaver. Okay? Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wadcast Podcast. I am your host, Eddie Ift. This is very weird. We're filming. We don't film, but we are, and it's audio. It'll be available on YouTube and 
Facebook Live, and I don't know where the fuck it'll be, but uh, this is a first, Duffy. So you are the not the first time I filmed it. The first time I filmed in this studio. Uh, this is my manager at Arson House's studio, and uh, Duffy Duffy Gaver here, who is uh, world renowned. You're everything. He's a, he's a renaissance man. He's a uh, one of the top celebrity trainers. Would you take that? Would you take that? Yeah, I don't, accolade. I don't love it, but uh, yeah. Okay, he's a former SEAL team member. Uh, former? Or are you one of those guys like I don't talk about that ever? Uh, former he's Marine. T- former Marine. Marine also. Yeah. Oh my God! So you're like uh, David Goggins kind of thing, where you are no. like, I'll try it all. No, not, <laughs> not uh, for sure not. That guy's a psychopath. Uh, <laughs> well, another subject. Um, you did a buddy okay. of mine's podcast, Joe Prano. Yeah. Uh, the Dirty Sports. Yeah. And I was great. like, how the fuck did you get him? I've been trying to get Duffy forever on my show. Uh, with Joe's manager? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how we got together. Oh, she's a, she's a friend? Yeah. A friend of a friend said, would you be interested in doing Joe's podcast? And I said, sure. Okay. So I've I've known about you forever. Uh, you you had a CrossFit gym for a while. You mm-hmm. do some CrossFit. You uh, But you're like famous for... As a personal trainer, because I've had everybody on here who celebrity trainer or whatever they are, you're like the guy that's just like, shut up and lift. Like, mm-hmm. do your shit. Like, there's no easy way out of this. No. Like, lift hard, lift heavy, eat right, and shut up. Like, it, it depends. Um, yeah, I have a, a kind of a no bullshit, old school, I like to think mentality about the whole thing. I think. Um, uh, training's gone off on this odd tangent. It's funny, I was listening to a podcast earlier today, and there, there used to be this great thing, and it was, it was like SEAL training, for lack of a better way. People used to hear about SEAL training. You couldn't look it up on YouTube. You couldn't find out about it. You couldn't research it much. You kind of had a ballpark idea, and then you just went, and you tried your best. You gave it your shot. Now you train for it, and there's pre-training, and you can watch it online. You, you have a pretty good concept of the whole program. You can specialize, and, and you can pay to train for it. And this seems to be the new thing now is there's a place where you can unload your cash to prepare for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of just, like, showing up on the day or relying on your own intuition saying, hey, I'm going to – I'm going to do a lot of swimming, so I guess I should hit the pool. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of, it seems like, pull-ups and calisthenics, so I should probably polish that game a bit, and then I'll just go play my cards on the day. Now they prepare, and they prepare, and they prepare, and it's almost like um, in the, in the uh, people are trying to make money off it, and I get that. Everybody's trying to capitalize on some angle of everything, uh, but it almost seems like they psych themselves out. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I, my argument with the CrossFit Games when they claim to create, you know, their their competition is the fittest people in the world. I'm like, yeah, the fittest people that prepared for these events, mm. and I would like them to prepare, but then they get there, and every single event is shit they never could have prepared for. But it's like, like take this refrigerator, and you're gonna run it up this hill. And so it's like you don't know how you're going to hold it, how you're going to grab it, but it's going to take brute strength, endurance, they stamina. They won't do it. And then you do – Because their athletes would all look bad. But I'd like 20 events like that, and in the end, we're really going to find out who the fittest person is. Not the guy that trained the most, but the guy who really, truly is the fittest, strongest, if you wanted to, If you wanted to have a fittest man on earth contest, you would have to do – and I, 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 I talked to Greg Glassman in 2003. I was working on Troy, and uh, his friend Nick McGinless, he's a strong man, trainer, stunt man extraordinaire from the U.K. He came up to me, and, of course, nobody had computers with him. So you had to go down to the hotel's computer center, and he showed me the, the CrossFit page, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. So I call up the number right there from Mexico, and I, uh, Greg Glassman answers the phone. I'm like, hey, this is who I am. I see who you are. Your stuff looks cool. I want to come up. And we had to come back from Mexico for uh, a break. And I went up. I'm from Northern California, so I went up, stayed at my sister's, went over the, the, a three-day seminar that Greg taught. It was myself. Uh, Greg Amundsen uh-huh. was there. Uh, I want to say TJ, who is a, uh, I believe, a SWAT cop from Florida was there. Um, uh, there's just so few people. Um, 
and it was taught at the original place in Santa Cruz. So this is way back when. 2003. Holy shit. And uh, Greg presented it as this is all there is. This is all you need. This is the basics, and this covers everything. And it, it, it was a very cool program and a very solid concept. And I got the Hopper concept and all that. But to me, and this is just my thing, what the games have turned into is their own specialty sport. So yeah. it's no different than, uh, you know, swimming, you know, the whatever the, or, uh, the mile run. There's yeah. guys that run the mile. That's what they run. There's guys that do CrossFit games. That's what they do. They have their own specialty sport. So it's no longer what he talked about. Yeah, it's kind of like the decathlon. So now I think if you really wanted to have something, and I talked to Greg, this is where I was going with this. I talked to Greg about this. If you wanted to do something that was of the original idea, it would have to be like a King of the Beach thing where you did basically an, an Olympic, at least a sprint, if not an Olympic distance triathlon mixed in with more CrossFit or strongman. I, I originally thought a strongman competition mixed in with an Olympic distance triathlon because that athlete would be, <laughs> you know what I mean? That, yeah. that, a guy with that kind of endurance and to come off – what would have to uh, the pace you'd have to keep on those longer stretches of aerobic capacity mixed in with turning around and having to pick up atlas stones mixed you know back and forth to those things that would be something that I think would probably crush most of the crossfitters I don't you know more than yeah. I do about what's currently taking place in the games but uh, it, it, to me where it's gone and I'm sure you have people that are you all different directions on this. That would be my take on it, is that it has gone into its own specialty sport. It's no longer the hopper. It's the hopper as long as it's the CrossFit hopper. Yeah. How old were you when you went in the military? 18. Oh, you were, You went straight in, right, after yeah. high school? Uh, I quit high school. <laughs> <laughs> Did you join Marines first or Navy first? The Marines. And then? Um, I was in the Marine Corps, and I did a West Pac deployment, and I met some SEALs on there, and I talked about the difference between being a Marine and being a SEAL, and I'd been diving since I was 15, and it seemed like a, a right up your thing seat. I wanted to do. Yeah, I think people don't uh, understand that a lot when they hear about the Navy SEALs, how much it was basic underwater demolition. Like, it was like the whole creation of it was to, like, go underwater and, like, scuba diving and and, and create bombs and things and detonate bombs, and, and uh, it turned into this, like, the SEALs. I feel like now they're like ninjas. You know, like like uh, Barack you know, Obama would be like, this, call in the ninjas. Yeah. Elite, elite, elite. Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, it's funny. I talked to a friend of mine from the Marine Corps a couple of days ago. And again, and this goes back to this podcast I was listening to, this desire to be elite and that title of elite or specialty or specialized or something. And it's, it's almost a drag because um, I, was a, I was a sniper in the Marine Corps and then obviously I was in the SEALs. And when you talk to guys that were in the regular service, there's almost this thing of, oh, well, I was only in the regular military. Mm -hmm. And you're like, dude, that's plenty. Yeah. Being in the service, being a 0311 uh, infantry guy in the Marine Corps, that's a lot, especially nowadays. That's... That's right. all the time. That's frontline combat troop. To be an 11 Bravo, I think that's what they still call infantry in the Army. That's, that's plenty. That's a lot of, that's a big fucking ask from mm -hmm. a young individual. And this, this thing that you have to be, uh, I don't know, what people conceive of as Johnny Rambo or some horse shit like that. Yeah. It, it's, it's odd. And I think it's damaging to the culture, personally. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but I'm I'm curious too because I I know nothing about like the military never been part of it myself but and I'm I'm wondering are there guys that go in pass make it through Bud's training become Navy SEALs and see no combat and then there's guys that are just regular infantry guys who are yes. in the thick of it all the time yeah. oh, right yeah. so I would imagine when it comes down to it it's all about the experience then the guy uh, it there's this, it's this weird thing of the qualifying people. It by oh, this or that, you did this, you didn't do that, as if it qualifies you for some other, you know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Uh, it's 
Special forces, in certain regards, have it as good as it gets. They actually participate in their mission planning. They, they in certain regards, can, can control their destiny. They get the best insertion platforms. They, they can go do a very specific job. They get the, their extraction by their design a good chunk of the time. This is not all the time. It can, it can go very well for them. It can go very, very bad. This is, mm-hmm. this is combat. Yeah. This is life with guns. Yeah. Infantry, regular grunts, they don't design anything. They're in the winds of this thing. They go where they're told, do what they're told, and it's, it's a, they get a much shorter deck. Do you know what right, I'm saying? Right, 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 right. So... Uh, how long do you spend in the military? Uh, almost eight years. Okay. And then how'd you get into training? A friend of mine that was a trainer said, hey, you want to train somebody for me? And I was very resistant, and then I said, yeah, and I started training people... And then somebody said, hey, I'd, can you train this actor? And I said, sure. And I trained one, and that led to another one. And another right, one. right, right, right. Here's my question, because I've got a bunch of friends that are celebrity trainers. We live in this. <laughs> it's such a celebrity train. It's weird, because I've had people contact me, and they're like, I want to be a celebrity trainer. <laughs> I never wanted to be a celebrity trainer. I just, training seemed like a good thing, and I ended up training celebrities. It seems so weird to want to be a celebrity Oh, well, trainer. the guys that are listening to the show right now, a lot of them are coaches at CrossFit gyms, and that's like, to them, to them, the paramount of this business is what you do or to be one of those TV trainers, to do like what Bob Harper's doing on Biggest Loser or something like that. That's like... They've taken their job and taken it to the elite level. So if you're training celebrities... That's, f- that's for sure not the elite level. I wouldn't <laughs> tag that word. I wouldn't uh, devalue the word elite with that at all. Those, those shows... <laughs> well, I've I, had I my just, arguments with no, them. I, I just turned down one of those shows. And I wa- I've, I've seen snippets of it because I know a trainer that did it. And... It's just the weirdest thing. Oh, I, I, I was probably the most shit I've ever gotten on this show was I got in an argument with who I'm friends with her now. But she came on the show and I argued about The Biggest Loser and I said, it's all bullshit. I said, you're dealing with people with emotional issues, not, not nutrition and exercise. I go, these people have eating disorders i said get them a psychiatrist not a trainer once they fix their mental shit they can come in and start eating and eating right and exercising i go but right now you got someone that's got you know addiction issues and all kinds of shit i go fix that that show they throw them on a treadmill behind the scenes for eight hours and run them down like a guinea Starve pig and, yeah and start i go it's not normal and then and the american people are like oh i can do that no you can't you can't do that. You don't have 12 trainers around you all day long. It, it's fucking crazy. And I got mad. And the people that listen to the show, I thought they were going to stand by me. They came after me. Everybody's like, you're an asshole. You know, she just does this job on the show and she's trying to do her best. And you were treating her like shit, which maybe I was, but I still stand by that. That those shows are, they do a disservice to people. It, it's... Look, if somebody somebody explain this once to me, I'd I'd gone to a uh, there's a trainer, I'm sure you uh, I can't think of his name right now. He's very famous for the Swiss ball. Who am I thinking of? I know his name. I'll get it. Um, Cause uh, somebody wanted to do the show out of his gym. Um, it was his thing. Anyways, so he. Ah oh, man, I really now it's going to bug me that I can't think of who it is. Anyways, we'll get back to it. So. I went to his seminar and I saw this, I saw this, <laughs> uh, I saw this seminar and I was like, oh, I always wanted to look this guy up. And I looked him up and he was given a seminar that week and it said, sports performance nutrition begins at the mouth. And I, dude, I'm in. Called up, I moved my clients around, I go to this guy's seminar, I go to the seminar, the seminar starts at, I don't know, whatever time, let's say it started at eight. I go to the five till eight, I come in and the seminar's in full motion. I'm like, whoa get my little name tag, I sit down, and he's talking about the craziest shit 
ever. He's talking about how him and his wife were driving and the sun was in his eyes and it was bright and it was burning his eyes and he told his wife to stop the car. I'm going to butcher this guy right now. And he, there was an orange tree and he went and he good, took an orange and he smelled the orange and the orange went up his nose and he stared straight at the sun and it didn't even bother his eyes. And I'm sitting in this seminar thinking, you fucking crazy fuck, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, and at one point, I'm standing up because in the military you learn if you're going to fall asleep in something, you stand up in the back. So I'm standing up in the back. And then he starts doing this thing like, hey, Eddie, what have you learned so far? And of course, nobody has a question. They're, they're, you know, they're like, uh, and he goes... And he feeds them answers, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, fuck. And I was like, go to the bathroom now. And he goes, who <laughs> seats that? And I'm like, fuck. And he's like, Duffy, what have you learned so far? And I go, ah, I was going to go to the bathroom. It says sports performance nutrition begins at the mouth. I have yet to hear you talk about sports performance or nutrition whatsoever. I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> and he's like, I can see how you would think that. Stick around, and we will get into it this afternoon. And it was the, it wasn't. It was holding up cups of agave behind people's back and saying, "Do you feel up and forward or down?" Oh, what the fuck, dude! What? I'm telling you. And he is a huge name in the fitness game, and this <laughs> is where his thing has gone because this is where the money is. Well, there's, there's, there's money all around. I, it's not, it's not in podcasting, but, uh, <laughs> uh, my question was though about, you know, like you seem like a kind of trainer that would be like, shut up, get back down. Do I need, you know, do t- 12 more, do five more. Like, don't I be never a pussy. Say shut up, <laughs> but I do say it's, it's time. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Okay. But, but you seem very not just a, on the tougher end of, uh, of coaches where I would think celebrities or actors from my experience, I have been an actor are kind of prima donnas and no, I, I look at it this way. Um, as you know, look, if you're an A-list actor, every people want stuff from you all the time. Yeah. They want, they want, they want, even if it's just, if you could just read something, if you could just listen to their idea, if they, everybody's on they want some of that thing that you got going on. I don't want anything from you. I want I want you to get from me what you want. Which is you want more, you want to be more fit. I'm your map. Let's go. So this is all about you getting fit now. So I want nothing from you. I want you to get to work on you. So uh, and I'm I, I'm just in that direction all the time with them. They can smell bullshit. They know what it's like when someone steps in front of them and they're like, oh hey my friend and. Uh, if you could read this, do you know what I mean? Everything yeah, leads yeah, to some yeah, yeah, other yeah. angle. Yeah, yeah. I don't have another angle. I'm here to get you fit. Let's yeah. go. And that's it. And I think they appreciate the fact that there is no other thing taking place in the room. I'm here to get you fit. Let's get to work. And so when you work with these guys, I'm sure some of them you work with just regularly every day their whole life. But some of them, it's like six weeks. Like they're doing a movie in six weeks or some length of time and they go to you, hey, I got this much time. Does that happen? Most of them, most of them go in and out of fitness. Yeah, they get more fit for films, and then they walk away from it. And I personally think that's healthier, yeah. as opposed to somebody who just is manic about their Constant. fitness. Yeah, um, and I, I, I tend to like being around people that are more like that. They get off on kicks. They're like, yeah, I'm going to do rock climbing for a while. I'm going to do this for a while. Um, so I tend to get the phone call. Hey, uh, we have an actor for you, or from them. Hey. Can we get back to work next week? Sure. And then go see them and then find out what the project is, how they want to look, and figure out the best approach for that end. Yeah. And then I I could see it being, you know, like their job is to learn their lines and get in shape. So it's – they're pretty focused because people always say, oh, how did he do that? Did he juice or did he – did you see – I forget what movie it was. Everybody's like, Ben Affleck, did you see him in a movie where he's doing the sit-ups? like upside down from a barn. It was like, Ben Affleck's not built like that. And I'm like, you get, you get, you get a length of time to get ready and you have just that to do. Learn your, learn your lines and do that. You can get pretty fit. Um, yeah. I mean, I, uh, they're, they're, they're hyper-focused. There's a reason that you know their name. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's the, as the cream rises to the top yeah. for whatever reason. Um, and generally they're all ultra-focused on what they're doing. Uh, there's a lot on the line. I'm fortunate. 
if you're if you're just a guy and you come to a trainer and you say, hey, I'd like to be in shape. Ah, okay. I, that's that's so so. That's fifty fifty in the game. You come to me as an actor and say, I've got six months and I'm going to be shirtless or half naked or doing whatever in this scene, and they're without question that's coming. I have a ton of leverage. As your trainer, I can remind you of this moment that's on the horizon all the time. I did a TV show once where I had to play a trainer, and they said, "You're going to have your shirt off," and I went. And I had been, like, eating like a pig and partying. I was just at two weddings, and I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Beer in hand. And I was like, I take my shirt yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. I was like, when? And they're like, we're shooting in two weeks. And I went, and I called a buddy of mine that is trains actors, and I go, what the fuck am I going to do? He's like, you're not going to eat another thing. He's like, start drinking water now. He's like, we got to flush but you. See, in, in two weeks, if you're not absurdly overweight in two weeks you can do I, this is something i go through with clients all the time is uh, i think most people feel um pretty out of control with their body it's as if their body's this thing that happens yeah. and they just are on the bus watching it happen and so you know there's this old joke with all my clients chicken broccoli brown rice that's what i tell everybody to eat. <laughs> and and it's tr- if you if you don't fuck around if you decide on Monday, I drink nothing but water, there's no alcohol in my life, I'm only going to eat chicken, broccoli, brown rice. I'm going to have this little bit of oatmeal thing in the morning with some eggs, whites, chicken, broccoli, brown rice, three meals a day, very small portions, no rice in the evening. Boom. That's it. That is all I do. Spartan thing. Yeah. Your body will turn so fast. You'll be like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I had no idea that I had this much control over this thing. Yeah, I learned that recently. I got a bacterial infection and was pissing out my ass for three weeks straight. Three, I lost, look at me now, I lost 25 pounds. That's fine. Because I was about 175. I went down to like 150. I'm back up to about 160 right now. I I don't know what was happening, but I anything I was eating was going through. I, I think that's something that hit LA because I added um, about eight months ago. I had the same sort of thing. It was I dropped brutal. 15 pounds. Uh, it's, it doesn't seem that uncommon right I now. I went to the doctors. They were like, they tested everything. They tested my, yeah, my pee, my blood, yeah. my shit. And they were like, no, you have nothing. And I'm like, no, they, <laughs> do you see this? <laughs> do you see this <laughs> bottle of shit I just brought you? <laughs> you can't I have about. something for sure. <laughs> it was so funny. They had me go. It was so funny. They tested my blood. They tested my urine. And then they give me this thing and they go, go home. And uh, there's instructions in this brown bag of what to do to get the like stool sample. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't want me to do it here? They're like, no, no, go home, and t- go home and do it. And I'm like, but I, I can do it right here. No, no, just I go it right here in the office. So I go home and they go, but be back by five o'clock. So I'm like, all right. So I go home and I do it. No problem. I come back and they treated me like a leper. When I walk in, they go like this. I put the bag on the counter. It's in a brown like shopping bag, like a, like a Whole Foods bag. And they go, what's that? And I go, what the fuck do you think it is? You sent me out of here. And I go, you know what? And there's a lobby full of people. And I go, um, I don't know why I didn't say stool sample. I go, it's my fecal sample. <laughs> and the whole lobby is like, well, <clears throat> back up a couple steps. Yeah. So then there's two ladies and a dude sitting in the waiting or in the behind the desk. They all look at each other like, and I go, I'm doing what I was told to do. And the girl goes, is someone going to take this? And the guy goes, finally, after a huge hesitation, he goes, all right, I got it. And I'm like, I'm sorry that I've shit in a, in a container and brought it in a brown bag for you guys like you told me to. So uh, he goes, let me get some gloves. And I'm like, am I the only person that's ever had to do this here? So then they go off with it and I get a message later and I, you don't have anything. And I'm like, uh, I do because something's fucking happening to me. And I talked to my buddy's a nutritionist, and he just kept adding food to my diet. And he's like, boom, 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 and add some probiotics. And luckily, no, I didn't I, listen to the doctors and take the and antibiotics. everything, all that stuff, and none of it does anything. Yeah. I mean, at, cer- at a certain point, your body's just got to do what yeah, it's got to do, do, and you got to yeah. give it some space to yeah. do it. <laughs> That's what doctors – like, friends of mine, their doctors say the same thing. They're like, eh, the body has a great way of healing itself. 
this is this is a whole nother subject. So this supplement thing. Yeah. This, oh. this perf- <laughs> okay, so we can start with pre-workout. We can work out stuff, protein <laughs> stuff, post-workout stuff, get your shit together stuff, get your mind together stuff. Six and a half million years of fucking evolution. When did we suddenly become these weak fucking things that can't survive or can't perform at our best without all this bullshit everybody's trying to sell? What do you take? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing? Food. No. I eat food. I drink water. I fucking <laughs> drink beer. I drink, you know, I like... I, it, it's just... This is, a, this is one of my biggest gripes with the fitness industry. And it's it. Uh, truth is, it's uh, one of the things I told Glassman because when I first went to CrossFit, and and I I don't poop I don't poo poo CrossFit at all. Uh, I will give credit where credits due. Nobody has had a bigger effect on the fitness industry than Greg Glassman since I would imagine Joe Weider or Jack Lalanne. And the ripple effect of him is staggering. You can't buy fucking horse stall mats because there's too many gyms going in. Yeah. You, the cons, I can't imagine what Concept 2 owes him. Yeah, seriously. They went from collegiate teams and a couple rowing machines in London to there is not a gym that doesn't have a fucking Concept 2. Um, Rogue Fitness, an entire satellite business built off of another industry. You know what I mean? And you could go on and on. Olympic I mean, weightlifting. Dy- Dynamax medicine balls, rubber plates. I mean, there's probably an entire... Uh, car tire industry of grinding <laughs> up tires and turning them into bumper plates that wouldn't exist without Greg. And so I, I'll give him that for sure. But uh, when I first talked to him after going, he'd said, what'd you think? And I said, dude, I love it all, but you got to stop talking shit about the rest of the industry. You got to stop talking about what shitty gyms, Globo gyms are. Mm-hmm. Because before this, and truthfully at that point, currently, more people get fit in those gyms mm-hmm. than they do your gyms yeah. than they do anywhere else. People have been walking into 24-hour fitness and L.A. fitness and Equinox and walking out in better shape than they walked in. And they dig it, and they're healthier for it. So, again, you, you got to stop talking smack about the rest of the industry because if, if you tell me that's crap, yours is the new deal, yeah. I have to know in the back of my mind that there's a guy right down the road that's going to okay. go, hey, my shit's the new shit, yep. and that stuff's crap. Yeah. So it's just this cycle of upmarket selling. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think it eventually goes back to the Globo Gym. I think once everybody's educated in this way of fitness of, you know, doing all the different, you know, when I started lifting weights in high school, it was, you're going to sit on the bench, you're going to do three sets of 10 and, you know, do a warm up set. And then you're going to do incline bench and then some, you know, by the way, it still all works. Yeah, exactly. But what I think is all of a sudden Glassman came in with kettlebell swings and doing more pull-ups and whatever snatches and all all of that's just going to, everybody's going to be so educated in it that they're just going to do that at the Globo Gym for $50 a month rather than pay. Oh, they already do. Yeah. Uh, you, if you go into any, uh, in every fitness, like Life Fitness and all these uh, equipment manufacturing companies, they all make stations now that are basically designed around that kind of stuff, yeah. functional training. Um, and uh, every gym has that area now where you can go over there and slam stuff around and pick up stuff and... You, you know, because I remember when this when this first started taking off, nobody had rubber plates. Yeah, they, they still all had the you know the big yeah. cast plates, and everybody was uncomfortable. You put a bar over your head, and they were like, "What in the fuck is he doing?" I got kicked out of Gold's Gym. Uh, yeah, kicked out like ten years ago, twelve years ago. Some one of the trainers at Gold's down in Venice was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm on the Olympic weightlifting deck, and I I think it was deadlifting or something. I was dropping the weight, you know, or something I was doing. Maybe it was a snatch or something. No, or dropping the weight, dropping the weight, dropping three fifteen and iron weights <sighs> is plenty to get you kicked yeah, out yeah. of just about any she gym on earth. She was so fucking mad. I think they might have had the rubber uh, Olympic plate, but she was just mad that I was dropping. And I said, I I don't want to get hurt. And she's like, I don't give a shit. She's like, you're interrupting me training my clients. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I got to find somewhere else to work this out. This is gold, because, right? Yeah. This is the, it's a gym, right? I'm just checking in here. I was like, I think I got to find a better place. And that's how I found Paradiso CrossFit back in the day. I was like, I got to work out somewhere else because, you know, I like this this methodology. You know, when I, 
when I got to it, um, it's funny. My cousin is a SEAL, and he was the one who introduced me to – My cousin is a SEAL. Who? Um, <laughs> or do so, you want an answer? No, no, no. I, he, he just resigned um, actually recently. Bobby Smith, Robert Smith, yeah. captain out of uh, – uh, he was Little Creek forever and uh, ended up becoming the assistant secretary of the Navy uh, – or assistant to the secretary of the Navy. How awesome is that? Yeah, he, he went far. That's and cool. uh, I asked him uh, a long time ago. I was like, hey, I, I, I tried triathlons after college. I didn't like those. I want to like, like be built like you guys. What do I do? Like, I want to be able to run, jump, still do everything. And he was like, check out this website. So I went to it, and I think it was Mark Devine's site, maybe. It was Seal Fit or something. And then Seal Fit led me to CrossFit. And I liked it. I was like, I can still – because I'd go into goals. I'm like, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. And it seemed like that's everything that was in a gold's gym. And I was like, I don't want to be a triathlete. These guys look like they're from Somalia. I want to be the in-between. I I was a sprinter. I want to be built like a sprinter. And I was like, I don't, you know, I, I can't go to the track and run sprints. Now I realize I could have. I should have just kept doing my track workouts like I did in college. And uh, it would be great. So you bring up a point. I wonder, do you think you'd be better off if you took injury into account? Do you think you'd be better off doing a mix of triathlon training and bodybuilding? Yes. Or now. Cro- or now, CrossFit? Now. In retrospect, um, Maybe not the long, long distance of the running, because I think that can hammer you. But the cycling, so let's say, let's the say, swimming. Let's, let's say that you only trained triathlon with sprint distance yeah. in mind. And then you bodybuild. Say you bodybuild two days a week. That's pretty much that's pretty much what I do now. Injury-free. Yep. Well-rounded fitness. Yep. And uh, never mind. <laughs> I mean, I'm training right now for something, I'm, which I was going to ask you about, because you... I love getting people's insights as I'm running 68 miles in 24 hours over the backbone trail from Palisades to that. Point yeah. to Go. I don't know why. I just, my buddy did it to and I'm it. like, I'll fucking do it. That's good. Do it November 22nd. I'm doing it and I trained for a while. Then I got sick and I'm back down to square one. Like I went out last night and ran 10 miles on the mountain and I was like, fuck, 68's going to be fucking hard. And, and I want to do it. When injury. are you doing it? I got like two months. November 22nd and I want to do it injury free and just break 24 hours. So that's actually a, it's just a really fast walking pace, but that's still brutal. Hmm. What would you advise? Don't fucking do it. No, I just do it. Don't, 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 don't not do it. Don't quit on it. Yeah, I won't. Um, I'll, I, I, you, I think you uh, do what you're doing. I think you're smart about it. I think yeah. you're, you know, avoiding injury is the biggest deal. Um, obviously, take care of yourself nutrition wise, hydration wise, and yeah. just keep keep chipping away at it. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm learning all cool. about the, the. I've got buddies that are ultra marathoners, and they're like, it's all about replacing that food the whole time. If you can constantly keep fueling. So, are you fueling on runs now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they're like, as long as you keep fueling. Because your body, I think they were telling me, you can add like two to 400 calories per hour, but you're going to be losing 600 calories per hour. You're not going to be able to add 600 calories per hour. No, you're going to so come gonna, off that thing lighter than you started yeah, that thing. Yeah. And uh, the water, I'm good. And the hydration, I got into the salt. Are you salts. playing around with the food to see what yeah, you can what eat? Yeah, what I can tolerate. Because I've done some marathons before and goos and stuff are fucking tough. To, I mean, they give you a burst of energy, but after you do like four of them, you're like, I, I can't. Put that shit in my mouth. I just hate when you get that. You're like that goo and water or replacement, whatever you're doing. And then all of a sudden you're like, get that sloshy yep. gut feeling. Yep. Like, this is the worst yep. running feeling on earth. We were talking about my buddy Dustin Fierro is an ultra marathoner and does the paddle to Catalina. He always, he's really good, like comes in second every year. Every year, second. There's a guy that beats him every I know he <laughs> And I was with him this week and he was telling me, uh, he was telling me about like, how much nutrition you have to get in what to, and we were talking about Lance Armstrong when he ran the New York City Marathon he didn't train for it really and because he's so athletic and so has such an endurance capability he just stayed glycolytic the whole time he was taking like a goo every two miles and just basically yeah he would it sounds do, horrible it sounds horrible but that's how he was able to keep that pace because he was totally like just going on sugar <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm trying to be a little that. smarter about it. Yeah, I've tried everything from like nut bars to uh, gels to, and it's just yeah. I've got I I just want to get through this thing. So I'm trying to find out how I do it without fucking up my feet, ankles, knees. That's it. So I'm uh, I'm an idiot. I should, I, don't, I don't know why I agree. I, I agreed to do it because of the fire. I've talked to firemen after the fires. I was like, I live up in Malibu. I was like. I mean, we, we got to do something for these guys. You know, they, 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 you know, risk their lives and everything. We got to do something. And then I was like, who's going to go with me? And everybody's like, yeah, I will. And now I'm like, who's coming with me? Everybody's like, good luck. Crickets. I'll donate some money. I have like four guys coming with me, but that's all I want. I don't want, A if mob. it was like, yeah, it'd be terrible. I like four in the middle of the night. We're all like, what the fuck is that? A mountain lion? <laughs> do you got stations? Yeah. We're going to four stops. So 17 miles. Stop, 17 miles. You're welcome to come. Mm, what day? November 22nd. It's like a Saturday, I think. Week before Thanksgiving, you'll be able to eat a lot. Anyway, we'll think about that. I got Tommy Hackenbrook, who was like number two in the CrossFit Games. He's a monster. He's like running five-minute miles right now. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm not going with you. He's coming. I think Dustin Fierro is coming, who is an ultra marathoner. My buddy, who is... Weird. He's done. He did seven marathons. Seven. I had him on the show. Seven marathons. Seven days. Name? Winston Fisher. Seven marathons. Seven days. Seven continents. <laughs> I don't even know the logistics behind that. How do he you get from it on place the show. to place? They started in Antarctica. Then they went to like Argentina or something, and then they flew to Miami. From Miami, they flew to like London, London. So to, he, to, he, he literally do a marathon, sleep and then on the slept plane, slept on the plane, got off, did a marathon, slept yeah. on the plane. Yeah. yeah. How's he doing now? He's fine. He's, he's this week. He's running around the rim of the Grand Canyon. So he's done. He's done race across America twice on a bike. He's two man team for me. He's crazy. There's weirdos like this. So I've surrounded myself with a bunch of them so i'm the biggest pussy out there and they're all gonna be like eddie this is your idea you're holding <laughs> why, us all up why are you falling back <laughs> yeah for sure yeah but uh so i know you, you probably don't want to name names doing what you do but who if you i i'm just gonna ask the question of all the, the celebrity actors you've worked with who's the who's the most like the Biggest badass. Who would you go, fuck, this guy is really talented, like, you know, athlete, fitness-wise? Um, uh, Hemsworth is a very fit guy. He looks like He's it. He's wildly fit. He, um, yeah, he was when I... And this is I, Chris, not... Yeah. 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 And uh, when I met him and we were doing... When we were doing... I think it was for Thor or the Avengers... It might have been the Avengers. Uh, he was working with, uh, he had an assistant, Steve, who was a boxing coach as well. So he was doing these mad workouts where he'd do rounds on the mitts, back to the workout, rounds on the mitts, back to the workout um, for an hour. I mean, just, that's hard. That's yeah. crazy yeah. hard work. Um, um, I've seen him surfing and uh, in Australia. My buddy and I were surfing this place one day, and I saw this guy, and I'm like, oh, that guy guy's a good surfer and uh didn't recognize him i'm you know you'd see me like oh, this, all australian guys are like good looking guys i'm like what the fuck do they do down here and i get out of the water and my buddy's brazilian he goes, <coughs> did you see thor <laughs> and i go what he goes thor you dropped in on thor <laughs> i go I, I did he goes yeah that was thor <laughs> he didn't know his name he just kept calling him thor, thor. yeah surfing with thor that's good yeah hey here's a new sponsor that uh I got my first games box and I was really, really excited about it. It's like, it's like Christmas when you get a games box. I'm not kidding. Box shows up in the mail. You open the box. It's got all kinds of gifts. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. And you also get, uh, you know, there's so many different companies in the CrossFit game, in the health nutrition, uh, market, and you don't get a chance to, try things, check things out. You never know why it works or how it works. All of a sudden you get a gains box. It's in there. You try it out and you're like, wow. And then you're committed. Um, you can get a subscription 
and it's great. It's easy. They've got all kinds of gift options and cancellations. It's not one of these things where they're just going to start taking money out of your bank account. Once you're done, you just let them know. And what happens in your gains box, you open it up. It's got a mix of apparel. So you're going to get some cool clothing. You're going to get some gear. You're going to get supplements, and you're going to get snacks. All of those, okay? And I know every one of you uses those or needs those. So it's apparel, gear, supplements, snacks. And it's worth double the cost. So whatever you're paying for it, multiply that by two, and that's what you're getting. So you're getting all this stuff half price. Every once in a while, you're going to get something. Yeah, I don't want to use this. Well, then you give it away as a gift to someone else. But I can tell you, you're going to love the stuff that comes in there. You know, it's usually like a protein supplement. Uh, You know, you're going to get some kind of bars that are going to help you after you work out. Cool T-shirts, shorts. Um, I got some bands the other day, those uh, to do monster walks, which I use all the time. I'm making my wife do them. And you can customize uh, your gains box by size and gender. So if you want to send someone, you know, a gift or you want to do it yourself and, uh, uh, you know, these are these are full size products and samples. And they're curated by industry experts. So these guys that are sitting there at Gainsbox know everything about the CrossFit world. And they're like, hey, these are all stuff that people need, people want. Order them now at thegainsbox.com. That's the gains, G-A-I-N-Z box.com. The gains box. The gains box.com. Buy your first box and they're going to give you a second box free. It's free. That's valued at $70 with the code WODCAST. TheGainsBox.com. Put in that code WODCAST because then they know you heard it here. WODCAST, they're going to give you free box. So you're getting two boxes at the Gains Box. Who gets two? You get two. Do it now. TheGainsBox.com. Use the code WODCAST. Just got a message from one of our listeners. Uh, tell me they're a new listener and also show me a picture of them at CVS or Rite Aid, I don't know where they were, one of the stores, buying their Tiger Bomb. And I know all of you, this 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 weird, crazy crap we do called CrossFit makes you so sore, so tired. I've been running lately a lot and hiking, and uh, it's messing me up. I'm not going to lie to you. And, uh, and, you know, going to from, – from working out, lifting every day to uh, up in the mountains, my hips – My quads, even my neck, you know, everything. I'm surprised at how sore I'm getting. And that's why I rely on Tiger Balm, uh, uh, all kinds of Tiger Balm. I'm using the muscle spray uh, a lot, which is the muscle spray is great because it's like putting on suntan lotion. There's hard to reach spots. You just spray it on. I don't have to have my wife lather it on me and it's non-greasy and I take it with me. I just throw it's in my car. So I get done from workout. I just throw it on and it takes care of me. I spray it on and boom, all of a sudden after a workout, feeling great again. They've got all kinds of great stuff, though. They've got Tiger Bomb Active uh, is the name of the company. They've got Tiger Bomb Active Muscle Rub. You can use that. That's a pre-workout. You want to get yourself all warmed up and ready to go. Get the blood flowing to the area that you're going to work out. Rub it right on there. Or you can rub it in your whole body. I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Wherever you want to rub it. Don't rub it where I'm ta- thinking, though. That's the one place. Do not rub it there, if you know what I mean. Do not rub it there. But everywhere else. Um, and then they've got Tiger, Tiger Bomb Active Muscle Gel, which you can use just like the spray. And that's for post-workout. Um, you can put it on yourself for easy-to-reach areas. I use the muscle spray because I can put it on my back, my lower back, spray it there, my hamstrings, wherever I need to go. And I keep it in my car. Go to your local Rite Aid, Walgreens, or CVS and pick it up. They just have it in the store. You don't have to order anywhere. You don't have to put in a code. And uh, get yourself some Tiger Bomb Active Muscle Spray, Muscle Rub, Muscle Gel. Just go in there, like I've said. Go into t- go into Walgreens or CVS or Rite Aid and just scream, Where's the Tiger Bomb? And they'll point to it. And there's a whole bunch of it on the shelf. Pick it up and then thank me later. Hey guys, I just want to mention that today's episode is brought to you by Whoop. If you're not familiar with Whoop, you're living in a cave. Everybody's doing the Whoop. Uh, Whoop, there it is. I said it. I don't know. They must hate me for saying that, but I love saying it. I love wearing it. Um, You know me. I'm a data nerd. Data, data. Do you say data or do you say data? I say tomato. You say tomato. 
you say data, I say data. I say I'm um, a douche. Jesus. Um, anyway, Whoop is one of those uh, wrist straps that you wear. What's How's Whoop different? Because it's just awesome. Uh, you're going to wear it, and Whoop's going to measure your heart rate. And it measures it 100 times per second, 24 hours, seven days a week. You can charge while you wear it. You will put this little plastic thing on. The, you charge the little plastic thing, boom, throw it over, and it charges. So you never need to take it off. And what it's going to measure, your recovery. It looks at your heart rate variability, your resting heart rate, and your sleep quality. You're going to get all of this feedback on your phone to your on an app. You get a recovery score when you wake up, and it's going to let you know right away. You're like, hey, you know what? You're not rested enough. Don't push it. Don't be an idiot because you're just going to do yourself damage. Uh, it lets you know your strain. It does full day heart rate monitoring with insights into heart rate, average heart rate, resting heart rate, max heart rate, calories burned, and the amount of exertion a user has throughout the day. Then it's going to monitor your sleep at night. It monitors your heart rate throughout sleep to look at sleep quality, your sleep cycles, times within each stage of sleep. There's REM, there's deep, and there's light sleep. And it tells you all of those and tells you what you need. It'll show you, well, you're in this range. You need to get to this range. So um, so it provides sleep performance insights based on your actual sleep versus the sleep needed. And uh, why is Whoop different than anyone out there? Because it provides insights through the app from the heart rate data collected to help users make better training habits and perform optimally on a daily basis. It's basically, it's your coach. Yeah, Whoop's going, hey, dude. Slow down, calm down. You don't need to do your third workout today. Hey, dude, you know what? You're doing good. Get your butt to the gym. You're ready to go. You got some good sleep. You're ready. Um, and the sleep coach is really ultimately what we all need because it makes you a little more conscious of of when you need to sleep. And if you start looking at it and it'll give you your weekly breakdown, you're like, wow, I'm only sleeping five hours a, a day. I, I got to figure this out. I got to get to bed earlier or I have to stop going into the gym early in the morning or something because I need more sleep. So they got a new whoop strap, the 3.0. It's got all kinds of hardware imp improvements. So if you don't have the strap 3.0, get it. It's got a five-day battery life. Five days this thing stays charged. It's got live heart rate monitoring, live, right as you're going. It's got improved ProNet band. It's got Bluetooth low energy to connect with third-party devices. And they got software improvements. They got a strain coach. It's going to give you training level recommendations based on your body's recovery to take the guesswork out of how hard to push yourself for optimal training. Uh, Whoop Snap Plus. Uh, overlay live heart calories and live strain in a real time. In real time, I'm sorry, with your phone. So you're going to use uh, the videos to analyze your performance or share with a coach or on social media. Um, it's got a heart rate broadcast. It connects you, your Whoop, to uh, Bluetooth low energy compatible devices so you can see your heart rate on devices on the train uh, as you train. You know, like uh, – so if you're hooked up, you can like look down and go, okay, this is where my heart rate is. This is how I'm doing. So it, it eliminates basically a heart rate monitor. Um, you just got this little strap on you. Uh, you know, I was using one of those polar ones. Uh, who needs it when I can just use my whoop? Um, so check them out. Uh, I, I really can't tell you how much it's done for me, especially with having a kid and trying to train and do everything. Uh my whoop has said to me, there are times when I want to stay up and watch TV and I'm like, you know what? I am getting horrible sleep. I need to get to sleep. I know I only have seven hours till I need to be somewhere tomorrow. I got to get that seven hours. And because uh, I know I've only been getting this much this week. And then there are times I'm like, you know what? I'm fully rested. I'm ready to go. It's time to really, really do a hard workout today. Um, I, 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 I think every athlete should be wearing one. Um, it's just such a great two. Tool, go to whoop.com and use the code wadcast. You're going to get $30 off your first order. That's whoop.com. Use wadcast to get $30 off. I just worked with uh, John David Washington. Staying going back to that one. He is uh, wildly focused in athletics. Um, he definitely gives it up. It's funny, all these guys. Um, Chris Pratt is when he works out, he's no joke. You know? Yeah, but he went from being 
Were you the one that did the transformation? I mean, I remember Chris Pratt when he was on uh, whatever that TV show was, and he was just, he seemed like a chubby dude. And all of a sudden, he was a chubby dude. All of a sudden, he's a freak. Yeah, Star Lord. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he's uh, he just works hard. I mean, it, it's it. This is the thing: is like uh, everybody tries to make this seem so hard, so complicated. Or mm -hmm. I'm take that back, make it seem complex and complicated. It's not. It's effort, yeah. and they they pony up. They they work so hard. Um, it's as if they people think they've they've there's some secret or thing that they got snuck. I when I meet these guys, I tell them right out of the gate, I don't have a there's no secrets. I got no magic anything back here. I'm gonna lay out a very basic plan, and you are either gonna get into it or you aren't. So you make that call. Um, they just worked really hard. Uh, Chris busted his ass every time. They, somebody asked me in an interview. They say, um, you know. How how is it trying to get these guys to work? Some people you have to push. Some people you have to pull back. You have to say, hey, that's that's enough for the day, because they'll just keep going. And Chris was one of those guys you had to say, ah, hey, that's that's good for today, because he just go and go and go and go. <laughs> yeah, because I would wonder that that you know if, if let's say I booked some big movie, which I never will. Uh, let's but, say when you book your big movie. No, I, I I'm seriously done with acting. I would rather direct <laughs> than act. I hate putting makeup on. I hate sitting That's in a trailer. All actors love putting on makeup. I love I love telling people what to do. I hate fucking being told what to do. I hate getting on my mark. Get off your mark. Go in the trailer. Go sit in there. And then, you know, I lose my focus and then I come back out and they're like, you, how do you not know your lines? You've been sitting in there for two hours. And I'm TV. Like, I fucking was texting. And so I, I would rather just be the guy on the other side of the camera. But um, but if you said to me, you need to get ready for the I that'd be my biggest problem is overtraining. I'd be like, can we work out again? Can we work out? again? So then your trainer says no. Yeah. He says uh, you don't get big in the gym. You don't get stronger in the gym. You get your ass beat up in the gym. You yeah. get bigger and stronger in bed. You get yeah. bigger and stronger at the table, depending on what you do or don't eat. That was always my problem with coaching that I think a lot of CrossFit athletes have the problem with. They all jump coaches constantly. They're like, they coach hop from this coach to this coach because they're like... Because they're nervous. Yeah. I'm not getting to where I want to get. It's got to be my coach's fault. And they go... Yeah. I'm going to try another coach. My Hunter McIntyre who's on this show all the time. Fucking does it every time he switches coaches because he thinks I need to meet with this coach. This guy might have the secret sauce or this or maybe guy. he's not genetically designed to be the guy he wants to be. Yeah. You hear that Hunter? You're not genetically designed. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, I like it. See, if you, it, it. That's a real factor. And it's, it's, it sucks for some great for others. You know, uh, there's that whole rigmarole, you know, Armstrong and the sauce and all that yeah. shit. Before Armstrong ever got on the sauce, when he was like... Four, he was the best. When he was 14, professional triathletes yeah, was, were looking at him thinking, oh, fuck, here he comes. Yeah. He just came out of the gate, he said, lifted. He said that on Rogan's show. He said, I was the best on steroids. I was the best off. He goes, if they had everybody stop taking steroids, I would have beat everybody. He goes, but everybody was on it, so I beat them and all I still on beat it. everybody. Yeah. And I, I agree with that. It's like he, he just worked harder. Although I'm starting to believe this genetic thing. I don't know. There, have you seen this kid, White Lightning? There's a kid in Texas, white kid, 18 years old, ran under a 10-second 100-meter dash. And I was like, oh, my God, there's a white kid doing this now. And I was like, this is good. And he'll probably be in the next five years one of the top – you know, on the Olympic team. Who are his parents? I, I got to figure this out, what's going <laughs> on. You? Like, what the <laughs> fuck has happened? I never thought we'd see it again. You see it in, like, Germany, or you see it in, like, some other countries every once in a while, you'll see the 100-meter dash, and you're like, who's that white kid down there? And what, what country is he from? But now we have an American, and this kid's going to do He just won, I think he was number one in the country this year in high school. And his, ten, his under 10 was uh, wind-aided, so they don't count it. But he did still break the record, I think, the national record. How did you get so mad dog into fitness? I ran track, and I was a terrible athlete all through grade school and college – or high school. And then one day, you know, like they make you try every sport. They are like, hey, uh, we're going to try track today. And they set up the hurdles, and uh, they're like, go run these hurdles. And uh, 
I just crushed everybody. And they're like, okay, you're going to run in the track meet on Saturday or whatever. I was like, okay. And I won. And they put me in the next week. I won again. I never lost a meet ever, a, a dual meet ever. I'm completely undefeated all through my high school career. And I went on to be like one of the top in the state and recruited by colleges. And I, I ran Olympic qualifying time. And I, and I was like, and I, I knew I wasn't gifted like these other guys. Like I would go to the start line and I would look at these guys that their legs were up to like my chest. And I was like, how the fuck am I going to beat this guy? winning. I worked harder than all of them. I would go into the weight room. I would go down to the track when I didn't have track practice. I just heard this uh, podcast with Terrell Owens, and he talks about that exact same thing. He knew um, when he first got uh, into professional football, he knew he his feeling was he wasn't as good as them. So he had to, when, when they said, hey, everybody, we're done for the day, he would go back to the gym. And he'd be off season. He had keys to the gym, so he could go work, 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 put in more work. Because in his mind, he wasn't as good as them, and it turned out he was better than them. Yeah, Ryan Flaherty, uh, who's the head of Nike Training, has been on the show, and he said one thing he's found with all his top athletes that he works with, and he works with Serena and LeBron and you name it. He goes, all of them are constantly trying to find out things that can make them better, like. They're obsessed with like, will this make me better? Well, I'll, I'll add this to my regiment. Will this make me better? I'll add this. And they're constant. And he said, they're also the most competitive fucking people he's ever seen in his life. He has a, he has a training center where he gets guys ready for the NFL combine. And he goes, there's holes in the walls from, we have a ping pong table. He's like, there's holes in the walls from paddles going through the walls. This is a, this is something I wonder because I have a nine year old son and he doesn't like losing. And you, uh, sort of the modern thought of it is you got to teach him how to lose well. Yeah. No professional athlete loses well. No, they, <laughs> and it's weird because uh, the sports I, I like are MotoGP mm-hmm. and Formula One. And Formula One in particular, they don't lose well. <laughs> they lose, they lose. <laughs> They lose in front of the camera as they're supposed to. They talk about it the way that the sponsors want it talked about, but you can see they hate losing. Yeah. Like it is, um, and you you tend to like. How do you manage that in your child as they grow? How do you explain to them that 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 feeling that they have when they lose or when it doesn't work? It's in. It's correct. Yeah. You just got to manage it. I'm I'm doing the same thing with my four-year-old. She is the worst loser, like throws shit and screams. And And, but you got to look at that, and part of you's got to go. She's going to make a good athlete. Yeah, that's that's what I do think. But I'm. It's it's almost embarrassing, especially with the culture we're in today. That's. But see, this is the thing. This is. Do you so? Do you tamper that down because of the culture we're in today, which is all PC? Yeah. Fucking ridiculous. Or. How do you how do you raise a lion in a in a sheep farm? I read that in the end of the Pat Tillman book. It was talking about when they interviewed uh, when I think it's is did Sebastian Younger write that book? Whoever it was, they that sounds right. He went and talked to the like Taliban people, like after it was all over and everything, and they were saying that like they looked down on the American mentality of like we take care of this and we take care of it, where they're like warriors. They've been the whole, their whole life they've been fighting since the Soviet war. And it's just, that's all they do. And they kind of look at us like, you know, our culture's changing and we're like pussifying our society. And they're like, Hey, we're just going to keep fighting. So you can do whatever you want, but we will always be warriors. And, uh, uh, I worry about that. I worry that we've like, I, I surf all the time and guys like, argue out in the water all the time and i always go just shut up and do something like sh- like you, this there's I, I, if you're gonna I think if you look in the right places there's plenty of that culture that's still very alive here but in my sister works at, a, at an investment bank and she goes that she works with a lot of younger guys that she's a boss of she goes they take me in the office and cry to me she'll go they they cry 
And I go, do you fire them? She's like, I could never fire. I go, do you call them pussies? And she's like, you can't do that, Eddie. No. And I go, but don't you just like giggle when they're crying? And she goes, no, like they'll come in and say, I don't think I can work today. I'm having relationship problems with my girlfriend. I just can't. Yeah. Understand how but, that but goes I, on. I, but I, I think there's a there's a balance. So for as much of that as there is over there, there's the other side happening over here. You're just not seeing it. That makes sense. I don't know. Well, I told her because she hires. She goes, I, it's really tough to find hard like. There's, there's kids that'll work hard, but they just don't have that killer instinct. And I said, I'd go to like, go to farms and ghettos and find the where, kids. But where, no. Where, so where does she work though? <laughs> uh, not an specific, investment bank. Specific, yeah. Yeah. Where? In, in New York City. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Because there's some, there's some brutal investment guys in New York. They're yeah. cutthroat. They're, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I I think in the in the military world and different aspects of this country, there are plenty of plenty of uh, the the rougher side of town. Has the military had to tone it down though? Uh, yeah, I think that's a. I don't know. I look. I've been out since ninety one, yeah. so uh, I, they're running into their own PC problems. Yeah, because I saw the NFL. They were saying that the players' union wants all these things, and one of the things is they want that like hard ass coaching shit out of the NFL. Like they don't want to be yelled at. I don't really get what they get for it. it, it <laughs> like, uh... I I grew up on it. I mean, I remember football. It was like you're hurt. That like. Sh- Get back in there right now. Like, uh, but coach, sh- get back in there. You know, like, you don't. And I just can't understand this whole. There's a great TED talk with Colin Powell. And he talks about how when he was in. Uh, first, he talks about how he has when, when he does talks and he has kids. If kids want to, you know, talk to him during a talk, they have to come up. They have to stand at attention and they have to look him in the eye and they have to address him as uh, Mr. Powell or whatever. And. It's this particular thing he has them go through, and people think, "Well, that's so weird. That's this military thing." And and but those kids remember that. They remember that moment mm-hmm. as some as an important moment. Mm-hmm. It has it has this structure to it that's in, in their mind. It's important. And he talks about how um, when you're in boot camp, DIs obviously drill instructors are they they are as they're the worst people on earth to you. <laughs> Everything you do, a, like every thought you have is the wrong fucking thought. It's you're fucked. Yeah. You're, it's the, the full metal jacket is the best version of boot camp I've ever seen on a film. Um, but he talks about how you look back later in your life fondly at those men that were so hard on you at that time because they, they brought out the most you had. So to go and, you know, I have a friend that played for Alabama and I'm sure that the coaches were uh, fucking grueling. Yeah. But he looks back at that as, I mean, that's where he, that's where he came, the structure of him as an adult came from. And he's a great guy. And I, I think he'd be, you know, bummed out if you took that part of his life away. Yeah. Yeah, see, I grew up, my dad worked in football and was involved in football, and so I was around a lot of football coaches, and I remember they were fucking crazy, some of them. Like, I remember my dad knew Jackie Sherrill really well, and I remember Jackie Sherrill, he got in trouble one time, he brought a bull into the, into the, uh, the, the locker room at like halftime or something and had it castrated in front of, in front of the players. I mean, just like back in the day, there was, sure where that it was just crazy yeah. shit that used to go on. And none of I, I think if any, we used to do a, a drill called the Oklahoma drill where, or no, it was called bull in the ring where a bunch of guys stand in a circle. I think it was made illegal. Like it's, this drill is illegal in some States. The Oklahoma drill was illegal too, but uh, you'd stand in the ring and you'd just be, you know, running in place. And then the coach would call out a name of one of the guys in the circle outside of you and he runs into the circle and you know chucks you as hard as he can 
But the coach, being the dick that he is, will just call out a random name, and it's usually a guy behind you. So you got to, like, know where he's coming from, turn around quickly, hit him, and then he calls another number, and that guy or name, that guy comes running in. So you hit, turn, hit, turn. So if you don't see him coming, you're getting hit from behind, and you're getting knocked Head on, on a your swivel. Ass. you got to be yeah. looking. Yeah, and that was – and I remember when they'd be like, bull in the ring, circle it up. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, and I was 140 pounds, you know, going up against, you know, 250. We had got 330 pounds on my high school football team. And just, I'd be in that circle and I'd hear, Frank, and Mark Frank. And I'd be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just but get ready to See, now look at you talk about it. Yeah. I have no problem with it. I think, I'm, I'm, my wife made me start listening. I'm listening on tape while I'm running in the mountains. This uh, book, how to how to parent an adult, and she goes, "You really need to listen to this book." And I'm after two hours on it. I go, "This woman's saying everything I've preached. She's saying like we're helicopter parenting. We need to let our kids learn on their own. We need to be tougher with them. This bullying culture is, you know, it's a necessity in life to learn." Because life's not going to be easy, and you got to learn social hierarchies. And sure, some bullying gets out of control. But in my entire like school history, I never saw bullying get out of control. I saw it, you know. I saw the bully beat someone up. I saw the bully get beat up, and I saw them learn. And uh, I, you know, I think we're just this PC bullshit is just ridiculous, ridiculous. Speaking of bullying. Mm. You're, we have a mutual friend, Aaron. Hmm. Aaron and I, I met him at CrossFit. Uh, Is he getting bullied? <laughs> parody, so I used to bully him all the time. He would drive in on this little fucking moped. <laughs> uh. And I would go, wait, wait, you, you're going to come here on that and not expect me <laughs> to say something. And I know he loves motorcycles and he races them. And, and I always comment on his Facebook page. I'm like, where's your moped? <laughs> He gets he yeah. gets mad when I do it, but I <laughs> he would show up on. He told me one day he shows up with this boat pen. He's like, oh, I I fixed it. You know, he's like, I you know tricked it out. I that put it, a pipe on it. Yeah, that's what he said. My and I go, <laughs> you you can't say that about a moped. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a cool moped. It's cool. You know the moped. Yeah. <laughs> Moped's a moped. Although it's, it's it's funny because here it's you're like why you wouldn't think to be riding around on a moped. You know, I was just in Italy for three weeks and everyone everybody was on a moped. Did was, you end up on one? Yeah, we rented them as soon as we hit town, so we go down to the down to the beach in the morning. How much did you have to work while you were there? Lots. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was. Oh, we're on film. It was. Yeah. Totally. Um, it was a great job. I just, what was the movie? Tenet. And who's the star? Uh, John David Washington. Oh, that's the one you were just yeah. talking about. Right. And you went to Estonia first? Yeah, seven what? weeks Seven what? weeks in Estonia. What's Estonia like? Uh, it was great. That's it a was, former Soviet Republic, right? Yeah, that's, it, that's a tripped out thing about it. Um, so they've only been free from Russia for, I, I, I don't know, like 20, 30 years. I, I don't yeah. know. Um, it's a... It's, wild culture they're they're very they're very nice people very sweet people uh they're very keep to themselves people um you can see how you know in in my impression of it that idea of of having been soviet ruled where you know i don't want to i don't want to talk to a stranger Mm -hmm. I, i don't know what's up with you i'll just do my business keep to myself do my thing and then you end up talking to them, and they're just as, as they're nice people. You know. Is it an impoverished nation, or are they uh, no, they're wealthy? Boom! They're they're, yeah. they're a nation that is uh, tech is their thing, uh-huh. and they're on they're ramping up like crazy. Um, <clears throat> great restaurants, great everything, just great. Why were they in Estonia? Was it uh, just filming cheap, or was it is that where it's based? In the movie? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, hmm. It's, I think, just location. Just uh, he picked Look a good. great visual. Okay. 
location. What's the movie about? Or, I don't know, I can't, can't say, say that a thing about it. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. But you're an actor, too. Don't you do acting uh, sometimes? No. I, I do. I, I luck out. I do some stunt work, but yeah. it's mostly, it's all based on the fact that I was in the military and it has right. to do with gunplay or tactics right. or something like was that. It, was it, did you work on Barry? Yeah. Was, it, was he talking about, I was watching after one of the episodes, they were talking like, uh, Bill Hader and uh, Alex Berg, is that it? Yeah. Uh, they were talking about the scene where he goes in and kills all the Chechenians. Mm. And, uh, or maybe it wasn't the Chechenians, maybe it was, I don't know, whatever group. And did you teach them to go in and do the shooting on that? Yeah. Because I think he mentioned, yeah, he yeah, said yeah. Duffy. Yeah. And he goes, you know, I had to really make it look like, you know, he's yeah, like, I didn't have great. that experience. And he goes, I had to come in, and he goes, I was so intense. Yeah, no, Bill, he's great to work with. It was he's funny, funny, funny cat. That's a great, that's a great show. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. We were, we were talking about it when we were overseas. The the fight scene with him and the, um, where he, he's going to go kill the guy. He's supposed to go kill the guy. Oh yeah. But it turns out the guy's like a taekwondo master. <laughs> 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 Um, I can't think of the guy's name now. He's great. The stunt guy that does that is just um, the actor stunt guy. That's the story of my life. Uh, I went, I pitched a TV show once to, uh, I think it was back VH1 or Comedy Central. And it was, it was back, I used to get deals to do shows and they would, I would come up with a show idea and then they wouldn't make it. But this show I found, my parents were like cleaning out their house and found my list of goals from when I was like, like, 13 and it was all these things that I wanted to do and it was weird I had accomplished like half of them but half of them I hadn't and I was like but they were all like I want to hit a baseball over Squaw Valley Park fence which is where the little league field and it's like 100 feet like I can go do it now and it was all these like Stu- beat my brother at golf. My brother's a scratch golfer, and I, you know, I shoot like a hundred. How'd that work and out? I, I, so oh. the the TV show was going to be I go back and try to accomplish all these goals. So one of the ideas was I was going go, uh, to go. I have to do the little league thing, but I've got to do it during a game. So I got to petition the town to let me play against these kids. And then they bring in this ringer, this kid that's throwing a perfect game who I can't hit, you know, cause they're like, fuck this, fuck this old man that thinks he's going to hit. So it was all like comedically like that. So when we found the list of goals, one said beat up my high school bully. There was this kid who just like abused the shit out of me when he played quarterback in football and I was on the practice squad. He would always throw it high for me so I was a wide receiver I'd have to go over the middle and just get cracked and he would just laugh when I'd be like laying on the ground and he purposely would throw it high every time and just fucked with me so bad so I was like so it's a beat up my high school bully and I'm like well I'm in shape now he's probably old and fucked you know I'm like I got Mm. I got this fucking guy I got him this is gonna be awesome so we google him to look him up he owns his own jujitsu studio (laughs) And I was like, and the guy, the guy I was working with goes, goes, your bully became a bigger bully. He trains bullies now. He goes, you're fucked there. And I was like, okay, so, uh, so I'm going to lose that one. Uh, but that was, that was the whole show concept. It was just like me go do all those things. Um, I don't want to waste any more of your time. I know you're a super busy guy. You gotta go. I see you in where? Where did I see you last? You were at uh, what's the place where you get the seventy dollars smoothie up in Malibu? Oh, Sun Life. Sun Life. Sun Life. <laughs> Sun Life. Totally. The Wolverine or whatever, whatever it, it is. is. Yeah. It's like, do you want bee pollen? Do you want colostrum? Do you want? Uh, no, I want some fruit and some protein. Could you just put those two in there? I wish they'd open one in Santa Monica. Why, you like that place? Yeah, I love that place. <laughs> High end, ridiculous. I story. always see celebrities in there. That's the most celebrity. One day I was in uh, the one up in Point Doom, and uh, I'm standing in line, and Ed Norton and Anthony Kiedis walk in together. And they just walk in, and they stand behind me, and I turn around and I look at them, and I go, Don't act like this is normal. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you just can't do that. You know, like, Point Doom, you can. Yeah, that's a good Doom, point. That's good up there. <laughs> so, uh, do you race motorcycles too? Uh, just 
track days. Yeah. Uh, going out for one tomorrow. Are you? Yeah. Do you do you race cars at all on tracks? No. I just got my ass handed to me. Uh, I was doing shows in Atlanta, and one of my fans, who's a friend, calls me. He's like, "Hey, you want to go race go karts?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah, I love go karts." And I learned one time at a go kart track how to like do well. One of the guys there taught me about like when the guy goes low, you go high, and then as he comes out of the turn high, mm-hmm. you swoop in low. So I'm like, I'm going to fuck you up, dude. I'm ready for this shit. No. He took me to Atlanta Speedway. I didn't, I was like, okay, I go kart all the time. We go out, they just hand us a helmet and we get it. There's no like, okay, on the yellow flag, you're going to do it. They're just like, go, go. And I get out there and this car starts going, go, this is not a go kart I've ever been in before. <laughs> it goes 65 miles an hour. Oh, that's a good one. And, you know, like, you've got to slow down or you're going to get hair over some of these bumps. And then the turns, I didn't know that it's all fully, you, like, you, do, you don't break into these turns. You have to come off the engine and accelerate out or you break. <laughs> I was, like, helicoptering into the bushes. And the, the guys came out. They're like, lay off the brakes with signs. And I, everyone was lapping me. And I was like, fuck, like, you need skills for this. I, I, I do not belong here. Yeah, it's... Uh... I'm, I'm I'm fairly fast on a motorcycle, and I'm horrible on four wheels. It's really staggering. Yeah, I've I've got some stunt guy buddies that are fantastic drivers, and I've been to different tracks with them. I went to a track north of London, and uh, another one outside of Atlanta, and I'm just I'm just bad. I'm staggeringly bad on four wheels. I'm I thought I'd be really good. good on two wheels. Yeah. So you guys will go, and you'll like. Is it a bunch of guys, or are you just doing like time trial type stuff? Uh, it's a bunch of guys, it's and you're racing against each other. No, 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 no. You just you, it's a track day. You go out, you pay your fee. That somebody puts it on, they, which allows you to be on track. Generally, it's run in like a three uh, session format: slow riders, faster riders, the fastest riders. Um, but you and you go out like if if you and I rode together, we know each other, you're mm-hmm. comfortable. Then you start dicing it up a bit. Uh, but generally, you're just out there trying to do your best lap right. time. And then you start, yeah, you race against your friends or you guys that you bump into out there and you start, you, you get comfortable riding close to. Sounds terrifying. That's great. Motorcycles have always scared Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Always fucking scared me. If I, if I was wildly wealthy, I would travel the world, world going to different tracks. Oh, really? Like you yeah. like the different tracks? I'd love to go to Italy and ride Mugello. <laughs> That's all I am with surf spots. I like different surf Same spots all the thing. time. But motorcycles scare the fuck out of me. I lost one of my best friends. And uh, I always kind of promised my parents. I was like, you know what? I do a lot of dumb shit. I'm going over to Hawaii to surf big, big, big fucking waves. And I shouldn't be. Like, I'm a, I'm a decent surfer, but I'm not qualified Where are you to go? do that. I'm doing a stunt for Surfer Magazine. My buddy uh, is Albie Lair, the big wave surfer he actually did all the stunts for point break two and he's one of the top big wave surfers in the world and we got drunk one night and kind of made a bet and i said if if he does stand-up comedy i'll surf a big wave and i thought i was going to toto santos he's genius (laughs) i'm going to jaws so i practiced all week with dustin fierro who's a big wave rescue guy the guy that is running with me he was doing me uh doing toe toe ins and uh uh step-offs just down at like four or five foot, you know, San Diego. And he's like, okay, imagine this times 10. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, this is so So is there scary. a swell coming? Or are you like... So what, we're going to wait till December, January, wait for a swell, and then I'm going to pop over as soon as the swell happens. I'm hopefully going to get like the beginning or the end, you know, when it's... I, it's going to be very calculated. Get that will all sorted out, that... My, it's so funny because my wife is uh, – she like – I swear she wants me to die because I, I told her about the whole thing and I was sure she was going to say, you're not doing this. You have two children, blah, blah, blah. She was like, sounds fun. Sounds good. And uh, I was like, yeah, but Lauren, this is dangerous. She said, eh, you'll be fine. Like I got an audition for a TV show in Australia where they were like, you jump out of helicopters and – into crocodile infested water. It's one of those, like, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here shows. And uh, my agent goes, Hey, um, they're interested in you for this. Watch the trailer before you say anything. So I watch it with my wife and I go, Fuck no. Fuck 
no, 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 no. So I call my agent. I go, not doing it. He goes, that's funny. Your wife said you're doing it. <laughs> like, Why would you tell Great. him that? And she goes, you, you got to get your profile up. You know, you're starting to be less relevant. You need something. So, so you just race motorcycle. That's the only crazy shit you do anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, rock climbing here and there with some friends, yeah. race motorcycles, that kind of stuff. Do you climb up in Malibu at all? No, I go to what Cliffs mm -hmm. Indoor Gym. Oh, okay, I like that place. Yeah, there's some really good climbing up in Malibu, up in Malibu Creek State Park. My buddies go up there a lot. Um, but uh, when you work out, what is it? It's bodybuilding and uh... Uh, it's basic bodybuilding. I do go to the pool, swim a bit, do a bit of running, that kind of stuff. Uh, it, fitness is fifth on my to-do list now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I time with my son. Yeah, the kids one. make it hard. Uh, it's not even it makes it hard. And that's, it's, uh, it's something I talk to people about. If you want to move it to the number one position, you can. That's up to you. People with, there are people with kids that they are still manic about their fitness and their, their time with their kids. They relegate it down the list. That's their choice. Uh, but that's what it takes if you want to be on that, you yeah. know, at that level. Right. Or you got to be realistic about where you want your fitness. You know, do you want to look like this guy or do you want to look close to that person? Or do you want to have fitness somewhere here? Were you a good swimmer before SEALs? Or is that where no, you became no, no. a swimmer? No, no, no. Actually, I wasn't a good swimmer. Um, I wasn't a good swimmer until after the teams. Yeah. I, you, you, you do side stroke in the teams forever. Um, but... I didn't work, work on my crawl until I got out and started getting into triathlon yeah. and stuff like that. And I read, um, uh, what's the total immersion? Um, there's a book total immersion. It's all about swimming. Uh -huh. It's sort of the, the, the Bible. Bible of, you know, triathlon swimming. Right. Uh, it's a great book. I can't remember the guy's name that wrote it. It's probably one of the best instructional books fitness wise or athletic event wise that I've ever seen written. Total immersion. Terry Laughlin, something like that. Yeah, it's a phenomenal book. What what length triathlons would you do? Olympic. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It just it just becomes as you know, it's a long time. The the you can make room in your life for the swimming and the running, but to really bring your bike performance up, it's yeah. hours and hours, hours and hours to get that capacity yeah. up and just trying to decide whether you want to donate that much time yeah two of my buddies did the iron man last year and they're like come do it i'm like no fucking way and now i'm like when they once they did it and i watched them i'm like nah i gotta do it I, and i say i'm gonna do it before i'm 50 i got some years left i'm gonna i'm gonna i gotta do one oh all right um just, what am i I'm like 26 <laughs> <laughs> i only have a few years left i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it in the next couple of years, iron I'm, man i'm doing the run this year the 68 mile. I, after i do the 68 mile run i'm like I think it's going to be easy. I'm going to be like, I can fucking do a try an Ironman. I've only done Olympic distance. Nautica's this weekend up in Malibu, the Nautica triathlon. Yeah. And uh, they wouldn't let me in. I thought they'd put me in the celebrity division. I'm not big enough. They need soap opera stars. I just wanted to do it because it was only, it's a four mile run and it's a. Uh, I like that they keep the mileage odd. So that it's not a qualifier. Yeah, 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 nobody, yeah. You don't have the beasts showing up. Yeah, nobody wants to show up for it that's fast. But I wanted to do it and just show up in, like, board shorts, do the swim in board shorts, get out, ride the bike in board shorts and run the whole thing and just ride it on my mountain bike and just go, Ooh. ah. It's pretty short for the celebrity. It's, it's uh, I think it's 500-meter swim. Oh. And then it's, uh, I don't think they do the full bike. I think they do, like, 11 or 17 miles or something on the bike and then a four mile run that's doable in board shorts that's doable yeah but i couldn't get into it i could do that without i think without even training without much training <laughs> yeah so john crier you got another year off without me i'm coming <laughs> to get you though uh duffy thanks so much for doing this this is uh i've always wanted to have you on the show um uh where can people find you you don't yeah, want them to find you. Not really. no, I love that about you. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking awesome. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. You can find them if you get booked at a movie by Universal Pictures or Paramount. They'll they'll hire them and then you'll see them. 
But otherwise, you got to just see them at uh, Sun Life ordering the Wolverine. That's that's how you find them. Uh, I love that. You're like every Navy. I've had a bunch of Navy SEALs on here, and they all say the same thing. You ask them any questions about their days, and they're like, yeah, I don't like to talk about that. And I'm like, yeah, but if I was a hot chick, you'd tell me everything. <laughs> hot chick in a bar, you'd tell them. <laughs> What do they say? How do you how do you find out if a team guy is a team guy? Just wait, he'll tell you. Um, yeah. Were you Coronado or uh, or Little, Little Creek? Creek? Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, my cousin would be your right around your year. It surprised me because um, when you're in the teams, you're really busy. Mm-hmm. So you can. I, I was I was at SEAL Team Two for I think two years. And I was moving some gear around my cruise box, and there was a guy next to me, and he introduced himself as Pat and I'm Duff. And how long have you been here? And he'd been there five years, and I'd been there two years, and we'd never cross paths. Yeah. Because you you're in your platoons or whatever, and you're. You is know, it is it Team Three or Four that's over in Germany that does the like mountain shit? No idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Three or four. In Germany. Three or four. That's what, I think that's what team he was was the one that Three does the. Um, they do like alpine stuff. Uh, the, the, I think everybody does now. Yeah, I would guess. I don't know. They, it, it's a the SEAL community is much different than when I was in. Yeah, the training is different. Um, how you move around after you complete training is different. I mean, wildly different. You were there before Castro was though, Dave Castro from the CrossFit Games. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, he's younger. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear if you knew anything about him. Got to get Castro on the show soon. He's never been on your show? Never had him. We were going to have him on once, but he wanted us to come to San Diego, and I don't usually – I never go for anyone. I have to be there, and then I'll do the show. I don't travel for this. He'd be an interesting one to question about all of this stuff. Oh, so I don't think he'd talk now. The man behind the curtain. I don't think he'll talk now. Probably. He would have He would have two years ago. He won't talk now. But – uh We'll talk about it off. Ah, we've talked about it on air so much, so it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, he's – and I think he's up north now. I think he's up at the ranch where they had the first games. What is – what's that, Aramis or something? Yeah, Aromas. 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 And I think there's a – I just saw – I want to mention this. That's a CrossFit gym at the ranch. They have a gym, and they do classes. And I guess a lot of, like, weirdo CrossFitters travel around the world and, like, drop in on a lot of gyms. Mm. And uh, my buddy, Zach Forrest, who was, used to own one in Las Vegas, and they got tons of drop-ins because everybody's coming there on vacation. So they charge drop-in fees because they got to make their money. The Aromas one charges a $75 drop-in fee because people want to go there out of, like, the nostalgia of, like, this is where they had the first games. And it's like, I wouldn't pay $7. Beat that horse for all its blood, <laughs> man. It's, it's just... <laughs> See, that goes back to that original thing of like uh, when I went to the first seminar that Greg taught. We had how, Amundsen on talking about that. And how complete it was and how he presented it as complete unto itself. But then there was too many opportunities to make money yep. off of it yep. not being complete. Yep. So now there's the Olympic this and there's the this, yep. that, and the endurance this. and the, There's just too many... Um, it's funny because and I, I talk about this with clients all the time there, there was this time where if you wanted to be a runner if you wanted to run I would call you up my neighbor my buddy and say hey you want to go for a run yeah cool and you just go for a run and if I was running too fast you'd say slow down if I was running too slow you'd say speed up and you just you just got into running together and it wasn't some you didn't google the shit out of it and you didn't yeah. have to know this or not know that or wear this fucking heart rate monitor yeah. or fucking goo this it was just it was so much simpler yeah and i feel like in a certain regard more people participated in it because it was simpler because it wasn't so much scrutiny sure sure of the participants sure um that you you're doing it wrong yeah and this is this is a big thing in the fitness game you're doing it wrong. And this is breathing's wrong now. Now this is the new thing. You're fucking you're not breathing right. How the fuck do you not breathe right? You're you're I'm I'm not doing shit. I'm breathing like this. I'm doing a whole lot of fucking work and I'm breathing like that. I'm breathing right. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm getting it done. I'm breathing right. Um but there's too too much opportunity to 
dissect that down into something and then you're I think it's just the, the internet's created progression in everything. Everything. But I don't from, know if it's progression. That's the thing I'm saying is I don't know if it's progression. I don't know if nitpicking every fucking corner of everything is progression or if allowing people to just enjoy themselves. For, for the, the average person, I would say no. But for the, for the person, like if you're going to the CrossFit Games, you look at where they were when they started the CrossFit Games to where they are now. Yeah. I mean, they've advanced. But, but it was that, is that because I dissected everything or is that because some guy showed up and did better and then they thought, oh, fuck. It's like running a four-minute mile. Good point. A guy showed up. They, it was impossible. They thought it was I- impossible for a human to run a four-minute mile. Guy runs a four-minute mile, Roger Panister. The next boom, week. Boom, next like, guy, next yeah, guy, yeah. next guy. Nobody trained different. Nobody did anything fucking different other than they realized, oh, you can Well, that – Let's go. That – the internet creates that progression too because I see it in extreme sports all the time where – it used to be well, yeah, a kid that's... would do a trick on a BMX bike and you would hear about it. You'd see it in a magazine six months later and then you'd try to figure out how to do it where now the kid puts it on Instagram that day and then 6,000 other kids are trying that because they see that it's that possible. That day. Yeah. And so the, the, those sports progress to the point where – like I look at all the sports I did from skiing to, to snowboard, surf, and I'm just like – Boy, I really sucked. Like, but just being in a pool on a bicycle going like this used to be some <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And now you're like, what are you doing? Give the bike to somebody who can use it. And you're yeah, like, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's and, embarrassing. No, for sure. That that um, that breaking the boundaries as far as abilities things and the, the the instant feedback that everybody's got GoPros everywhere. Yeah. Everybody, you know, they film everything, they post everything. And I just talked to a friend of mine, Danny, about this. And he was talking about the very same thing, his, his thing's bikes. And you heard, oh, I heard somebody did so-and-so. You couldn't see it. You heard about it. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of try it. And then somebody else would pull it off. And it became, like, so, oh, we can do this. But it was a very slow process. And like you're saying, now it's just, it's out there. Everybody said, oh, he did that. He put his foot here. He did that. I got that. And they go out and it gets repeated tons of times. So now we got to raise the bar again and again and again. But... That's not nitpicking. That's not dissecting. Right. That's per- showing performance as an example, and you raise the bar. So I don't know if I don't know if the benefit of all these dissecting uh, different aspects of performance is as beneficial as they make it out to be. I think it's lucrative. Sure, sure. Wildly lucrative, yeah. but I don't know if it benefits. Well, you're you're. You look at your clients and the way you're doing things, you're doing it right because they come out and they, it works. I mean, I read an article about you years ago and taking CrossFit and adding kind of bodybuilding to it. And I was like, why hasn't anyone been doing this? And uh, I was like, why, you know, why we're, we're was, still it missing. It was against the doctrine yeah. then. You, yeah. you had to hate bodybuilding yeah, yeah. to be a CrossFitter. Yeah. It was yeah. like, that's crap. Yeah. Now, you know, the whole thing for the longest time, they were anti-curl. And it's like, everybody's got tendonitis. And it's like, one of the things that can help that is actually doing curls. Even though you're using your flexors, the way it works on your tendons, it's, there were so many things that were necessary. Like when Glassman said, oh, you don't bench press because you don't need that kind of motion. And it's like, what? You're never going to push someone away from you? You're never going to need that? That's not functional fitness? I don't... I. Why would you why would you build up one muscle without building up the yeah. other muscle other than so look I'm not I say, I, I'm not in the athlete business I'm not in the competitor business I'm in the look good business yeah I, my I, people come to me they, the studios come to me because they say we need him to we need him to look this way with the caveat of he needs to be able to physically do set these things um, so from aesthetic point of view you know I've talked about this on and on having a big chest just doesn't look it looks out of proportion it looks like you go to the gym and they don't want to see a they don't want an actor to look like he goes to the gym they want him to look like he just lucked out and we won yeah um but uh yeah the the idea of coming from that side of uh being a competent athlete in the games why would you develop one muscle group and avoid another muscle group it's it's like saying, hey, let's factor in an imbalance in the body. Yeah, I was going to say, it's also going to call us asymmetry, and you're going to have some kind of fucking injury from it. So it, it is stupid. Um, one last thing I wanted to... Oh, I was going to tell you a funny story. My daughter, four years old, 
and uh, she likes to run over these little hurdles in my yard. And uh, another hurdle in the family. It, yeah, and uh, I didn't like put. You know, I just said, "Run over them." And then one day I filmed her to send it to my parents. And watch, watch Izzy run over these. How good she is. And uh, I filmed it in slow motion. Like I just did it just out of fun. And then I go, oh, here, look, Izzy. And she saw it. And then she came over to me after she ran again. She goes, do it and do it in the slow again. I want to see. She wanted to see. And I didn't realize what was going on. When you run the 110 meter high hurdles, you do three steps every one. If you're like a high school kid, you're doing like five. And then you start going to four and you alternate legs. Her rhythm was off because I was just putting hurdles down. Just run over these, you know. She didn't like that she wasn't going over them properly, like that she didn't have her fluid because I hadn't I hadn't spaced them correctly. And she saw it in the slow motion. She saw bad coaching. Yeah. Yeah. She <laughs> called me out. She's like, Dad, Dad, you didn't put this in the right place. And I was like, oh, fuck. So I think it's innate within us to watch and, like, specify and – because we have these resources to do it. The fact she said, do it in slow again. She wanted to analyze, a four-year-old wanted to analyze her hurdling. And I was like, oh, this is, we're fucked with this one. But uh, thank you so much. Thanks for doing it. Uh, no I appreciate it. Uh, you, you know, most people come on to plug shit and whatever, but this is great. You just did this because I don't know why you did it, but I appreciate it very much. Because you asked. Yeah, well, thank you very Easy. much. I appreciate it. I'll buy you a Wolverine someday. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Google. Thanks, Debbie. All right, no awesome.